Welcome to the second video in the PPD-1 lab series. Today we're going to be talking about the drop-off and what's required for a control versus a non-control prescription. So if you need a reference to see what the requirements are in general on a prescription, I'm going to ask you to look at video one because that has the requirements by law of what needs to be included on prescriptions. But today we're going to go over the differences. For a non-control, really the main thing that you need to pay attention to is you need to fill it within one year of its written date. So if somebody dropped off a prescription and it was written, let's give you an example here. If the prescription was written in August 30th of 2013, this date that it was written falls longer than one year from today's date. So this would be an expired prescription if the written date on it by the physician was 8-30-13 it's expired. So just make sure that you're aware of that when you're looking at scripts and taking them in that you check the date and make sure it's within one year of the written date to today's date. Another difference now let's go into controls the differences are the same thing applies but this is within six months of the written date for control substances. So the prescription has to be written six months from the day that it's filled. Another difference for controls is that there's a five refill maximum. So a doctor cannot prescribe a control substance for more than five refills. The exception is that on control two substances, there are no refills allowed. There are no refills allowed on control twos. So C3s through C5 you can have a maximum of five, but C2s, no refills. It also requires a DEA number. It can be written or typed. And it also, they have to spell out the quantity here. So if it's 20, they have to spell it out. So those are the main differences between a control and non-control. Now let's move forward to really what's the important information to get from the patient when they're dropping off. You want to make sure you get their date of birth. So that is very important if it's not already written on there. You want to see if they have any allergies, and if they don't, you can write no known drug allergies, or it might be in your computer system already. Ask them, have you filled here before? This will give you an idea if there's any information you need to get from them, like their address or their phone number. So make sure you ask them that. Do they have an insurance card, or, or was there any recent insurance changes? Wait time. When do they plan on coming in? Are you, is your pharmacy really busy? Are they going to have to wait about half an hour for it? Or do they plan on coming in a week from now or a day from now? That will help you judge when to set the time for. And another thing is really just look at their physical appearance. Are they, do they look like they're able to function correctly? You know, is there something shady about them? Can you smell alcohol in their breath? You kind of have to make a judgment when these patients come up because you want to make sure that you're not you're, you're not going to be looking for a fake prescription or a problem basically so just make sure you're paying attention to the physical appear, appearance of the patient and what kind of status they're in all right so that concludes this video and please make sure you see that first video and the next video for more information thank you